Hi Taurus, and welcome to your November 2020 general tarot forecast. This is Sky here to uh, bring you hopefully a really nice, calm, and tranquil reading for your month ahead of November. Let's talk about what's coming up for you guys this month. So, um, it's kind of a blunt energy for you guys, I've got to be honest. As I've been meditating on your energy for about the last hour, hour and a half, um, I really felt that things don't have to be hard, things don't have to be problematic, um, but there's going to be a few things that come up that are so potent, so poignant, so clear for you this month. We're um, starting this month with a full moon in your sign, full moon in Taurus, that happened on October 31st, and that every year is really clarifying and really shines a spotlight onto your emotional sector. Um, and I don't think it's going to be super groundbreaking this year. I don't think it's going to be super shocking, but it's so karmic. It's like the delivery of karma that has been needing to come through for so long does come through for Taurus, especially in the beginning of this month. And of course, that can depend, um, you know, how, how that comes through for you. It could be super easy or a touch difficult, but I think that you guys are just going to get a great spotlight onto your path and really understand how you want to move forward. So this time of year can always be um, potentially volatile for Taurus because we have the sun in Scorpio, which is your opposite sign, and we have the full moon in your sign. It's your axis, you know? Um, so it's like sort of the second version of Taurus season this year. It's one of your more activated times of year. So I'm feeling that this really connects you back to maybe like 2014, 2015, 2016, um, or 2017, it's not so recent, okay? And it, it's going to depend on where the karma is coming from for a lot of you. But we're all dealing with context right now here at the end of 2020 with Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto direct in Capricorn. And you're one of the signs that actually can do the best with this, okay? Um, so yes, it is possible that a few emotional things might come up, a few things with the past might come up. You might suddenly change how you feel about something that happened in the past, or somebody from the past might really change the way that they feel or felt about you. And as you're coming into awareness of all of this and reconciling it all, you are really turning over a new leaf, okay? Um, we get a strong Earth vibe from you this month with all this direct Capricorn energy in your fellow Earth sign. Um, it's like you have this great ability to understand, okay? So no more mysteries, really. If things have been mysterious or if things have been foggy or unclear, I think that you really get a huge wake-up call and a huge reality check about uh, what has been happening. And I'm also feeling a big psychic expansion for you as well, Taurus. I'm feeling like you um, are suddenly much more aware of deeper truths. You're much more aware of the broader picture, okay? So you're not so focused on small details. You're not so focused on um, events that happened, but rather you're focused more so on the wider perspective. So you're not so much thinking about battles. You're more so thinking about like the war, okay? If I were to make an analogy. So um, definitely think about that, especially getting towards Sagittarius season at the end of November. Like what is the broader picture here? What is the um, higher goal behind all of this? Where does this really lead me? We are all challenged this month to get good with all of that. You know, even some of the biggest blessings or the biggest benevolence um, can seem out of touch or out of place with what we actually want for ourselves now, as I think a lot of us have had a change in soul purpose over this year. And you feel like one of the signs that is a little bit tired of the old context that is uh, really motivated for things that have not yet manifested. And that can be a little bit miserable. You know, if you're a Taurus who is here where you're on a path that was once right for you and you've had some new visions about what you want, but you're, you know, in order to be contextual, you're maintaining your own previous status quo, yet kind of wanting something else and knowing that you could have it but not going for it. You guys would know what that sort of inner tug of war conflict feels like. And the month of November is going to challenge you to um, make a few decisions, okay? Um, you guys have Ten of Swords and Nine of Wands coming up, and Eight of Cups, Six of Swords, okay. Um, something is uncomfortable, and I think for every fixed sign, Scorpio, Taurus, Leo, and Aquarius, there is a discomfort here because fixed signs are about to get super activated right at the new year when Jupiter and Saturn go into Aquarius, and Pluto starts to get closer as well. So things are going to become much more 
in your element, okay, in your modality. And uh, what that means is that um, you want to kind of have things ready to be permanent. You want to kind of have things ready to be what you want. So if there are a lot of things that are hard for you to get through, or if there are a lot of things that are hard to commit to, or it feels very menial or laborious to do what once gave you like a lot of um, energy, November serves as a great month to um, let you make a few alterations or to let you really get more confident about what you're doing and to understand what really is more so authentic, okay? And I really love to see that because um, something is tired, something is worn out in the energy with nine of wands and ten of swords. It's like you guys are um, afraid that you're fighting an uphill battle for nothing. Um, there perhaps is a fear of... Um, having made so many changes that we're just not going to take that chance again, things like that. And I want you guys to really perk up and find your confidence and see that uh, now maybe is one of the best times to make a change or to um, start to predict that new move. But um, beneath all of this Taurus, it feels like there is something deeper rooting it all down. And there's something deeper uh, beneath this se seemingly like perpetual cycle that I think we're all just kind of going through right now. You know, I'm finding myself here in a lot of the readings this month where it's like, okay, yes, we want to change. Okay, yes, we've identified new purpose. Okay, yes, but we do have a context that for all intents and purposes is working, but it's not quite right, but we want to change, but we feel like we've changed so much and we feel like it, we're a little bit nervous to shift up again and we hate to lose what we've come so far with, but it feels like maybe there's something deeper than all of this and we need to think about the broader perspective or, you, you know, it goes on and on, Taurus, and we, we kind of, in, in, in lieu of sounding repetitive, um, I think that there's just a, a more collective issue right now. But yes, I think that that really is an anthem that could apply to anyone as we're all just kind of like sifting through and processing and so deeply held by this time, okay? We are held by the energy of like Scorpio season and Capricorn coming together in a very harmonious sextile energy. It's like a cocoon. It's like, um, it's like a very strong foundation that we have at this month. So thinking foundationally, Taurus as a Venus sign, as um, a very, very healthy Earth sign, okay? Um, think about what your identity is this month. That feels important. Um, having a very sturdy identity right now this year is perhaps the most valuable human asset. You know, more than like money or relationships or um that that job or or family dynamics the identity is something that really is uh, seeping out from the background and starting to envelop right now so you're one of the signs that does best with identity okay because you're fixed earth energy like it's not like what you see is what you get is almost accurate unless you've got like a lot of you know um spooky pisces scorpio energy going on in your chart um Taurus is really a natural at letting the inside manifest outside and having a congruency between the internal self and the external self. Um, and that is what I want you guys to really strive for right now, okay? It's kind of like fun and quirky in society right now to have like a lot of facets to your identity and to have like a lot of, you know, deep hidden parts to you. Um, I think that this will go uh, out of style eventually where, um, and I already feel this shift happening and it makes me think of like myself as well as someone who, you know, does what I do. It's like, yeah, I've got like these different parts of my identity. And as I've forged and forged to have this, it's like um, started to become more and more of, um, I don't know, maybe like a liability in some ways to just have so many things that I'm devoted to, but it's not all really connecting. So um, I want to really look to Taurus people and Taurus energy to start to see what it's like to have this like very foundational, supportive, secure sense of identity, okay? Um, and really transcending what I think we've considered identity to be for a long time. You know, things like identity politics come to mind, and I don't think anybody really likes that. So really like transcending this sense that like we are confined by our identities or our identities define us to a, a point that they can't really. I think that Taurus 
Um, if I'm thinking philosophically about things, I think that Taurus has really the key to um, really forging ahead on what um, a new age, more strong, more essential, more ultra dimensional identity might be. Instead of like a one toned identity or instead of a multi layered identity, this is more of like an ultra dimensioned identity where there's not like so many layers, but it's also not opaque or completely ambiguous or completely you know, two-dimensional. I hope I'm making sense here. This is all very like a flowery philosophical terminologies, but I think that it's something that Taurus just needs to hear where your sign in this season is really shaping its identity. So um, watch out. Okay, here's a problem area. <laughs> I know that we, we love to talk about potential problem areas here. Um, so uh, identifying yourself based on past traumas. This is something that is uh, common in the Scorpio archetype, where our difficulties or our pain or our suffering um, become a portion of our identity. Um, I don't really think that this, those things are a matter of identity. I think that they are a matter of experience, and I think we have to come into a place where we do separate experience and identity, and we have a more of an individual power over our identity. Okay, so I'm on a bit of a rampage about identity, but um, you know, great time for identity insurance, for example. Like, uh, people, it's a it's a time where there's a lot of like taking going on and a lot of like um people trying to steal actually. So that's another random message is like watch out for having like your identity stolen or something. That is, uh, this year is a big potential for that. So what we want to do is we want to um really also understand ourselves and what we are uh provoking what we are projecting what we are emulating and start to get it as back to center as possible this is like where the value of of a strong sense of identity can come into grasp is like you know how am i coming off you know i've thought about this a lot lately too taurus and it's like you can so unknowingly be someone that you don't know that you are you can so easily start to slip into a territory without even trying without it even being purposeful of just like um being you know someone that you're not and I've kind of come back into my place where this Scorpio season is like, okay, I'm re-identifying, I'm figuring back out who I am and what I need to say and what I need to do. Anyway, it's like, a, that's what I think is going on with you guys too, is like a re-identification. So I'm a midheaven in Taurus, so I, I have a bit of this Taurus energy. Um, so it's, um, I, I can't understand it quite as well as you guys can, especially you people with like sun in Taurus. Um, so I can't really you know, project it in the same way that you can. But let me know in the comments below about this sort of identity thing going on and, and if you have any like feedback or if that's something that you guys are experiencing. So I was just kind of sensing it from the energy of this reading. But uh, before I get into the week to week, what's something else I want to talk about? So um, let's see. Let's talk about... Okay, let's talk about volatility a little bit. Let's talk about highs and lows. So I'm seeing a lot of like the magician, 10 of swords, you know, six of wands, the hermit, like it feels like you guys are super confident, super on top of the world. Then all of a sudden you're like downtrodden or all of a sudden you're like exhausted or it's a little bit like, you know, um, bipolar feeling. So there's a polarity that I'm sensing within you guys and within everybody right now, really. I think that it's something that you guys should look into this month. Um, I think that we all need to sober up a little bit. Okay. I think that we all need to hold up and hold on and get the mirror out and and see like who we are becoming and what we are becoming and almost um, getting outside of the body a little bit right now is actually not bad take it with a grain of salt we don't want to get extreme with this but um getting a bit more objective is really incredible right now because we can get way too um first person with things i want to say and it's like you almost so if you're spending a lot of time at home, you know, for instance, if you're, you know, due to COVID or whatever, you're most of the time in your house or working from home, it would be interesting to uh, postulate about what it would be like to watch yourself like in third person, like objectively and see what that would look like. Like say you don't know yourself or say you don't have any context with yourself and you're just seeing like what you're going through. What, what would you think? Would you think that this is a healthy way of living? Would you think that this, these, um, you know, cycles that you go through day by day is it something that is evocative of health? Because underneath all of this, Taurus is health um, and the health of your cycles. And it really does feel like some Taurus have got it figured out. Like some of you guys have gotten so healthy and so like um, fond of yourselves and so comfortable in your identity and it's beautiful. In which case this would not apply to you guys so much. 
Um, or this could at least be like a very joyful experience as you like see yourself really like thriving in this from the outside. But um, Scorpio season, the energy of Scorpio always, you know, shows things in their real tone. So what we might experience at all other portions of the year as like motivation or enthusiasm or excitement or exuberance can in Scorpio season be more of a like crazy electric mania or um, extreme coping mechanism to not having had that relationship succeed. Um, things get a new tone always in Scorpio season. And your, your, your energy is kind of involved in that too, Taurus, as this is your axis. So there's something about getting healthier. There's something about the health of the body and the health of the identity as well that comes into play with Scorpio energy and Taurus energy, that axis, when we see things in a new tone or when we when we walk through life and, and see ourselves in a new way. Um, so um, you're beautiful, Taurus. And I think that the last thing I want to talk about, okay, so we have a whole other talk, topic coming up. I guess this is going to be a long reason, a long reading. Um, another thing that I want to talk about for you guys is insecurity, okay? So um, definitely important for Taurus to see insecurity in past relationships, whether it was you or the other person, I'm feeling that love and romantic relationships really come up for you guys this month. You're the only sign that I'm feeling this with. Um, I'm really feeling that love and romantic relationships come up. And maybe it's just of the past because, yeah, we've got a sun conjunct Mercury retrograde in Scorpio um, opposing Taurus energy, obviously. So a lot of us are understanding a past relationship or the past context of a relationship. Um, and I think that you guys have got to look at things in a new way. I think you've got to. I think you, I think... Even though you've got like really strongly forged opinions and even though you've got like things that have been like finished and fixed and, and if you don't even think of it anymore, that's fine. This is probably not relevant. Like it's probably a different relationship or it's something more close to the present. Like again, if you're not thinking of these all the time or if they're not having an impact on you anymore, this really is not the advice for you. But if you're still kind of haunted by something or if you're still kind of like feeling the impact of a past emotional connection... I think you have to start thinking about it in a new way. I think that there's an influence or there's like somebody who was involved or like a third wheel or a third person that has had some kind of influence over you or some kind of impact. This could even be like a philosophy or a mentality that you gained in childhood that impacted or influenced a relationship from the past in a way that it wasn't really meant to go. And yeah, it's one of the most karmic months that any of us have ever had in our lives. So if we've like really betrayed somebody or if we've really been betrayed, that really catches up with us now, okay? A lot of things catch up with people right now and we all have to be prepared to have a little bit of karma catch up to us right now, good or bad. So I just want to prepare you guys for that. Like, And I think that it's so good for most Taurus people, like the most beautiful encompassing identities coming forward, the greatest purposes, the greatest gifts, the greatest things. Um, but for some Taurus people, it's like also, I don't think that it's anything too bad, but, um, you can just finally see that like that relationship or that job, none of that was about the relationship or about the job. It was all about like bipolarity or all about, um, depression or all about, um, the need for contrast, you know? And that's that and it not more complicated than that like like um bipolarity period the need for contrast period not about you not about the other person not about the third wheel or the or the other woman or the other man not about any of that all about a need for contrast period and as we get these like simple truths of scorpio season here in 2020 because that's what's so cool about this Scorpio season. The last few Scorpio seasons we've had ever since about... Okay, so 2014 was the last Scorpio season like this. The Scorpio season of 2014. But we haven't had one like this since then. <clears throat> Excuse me, Taurus. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of readings. My voice is crackling. So we haven't had a Scorpio season like this since 2014. All the other ones have been a lot more um, engaged by fire and air energy, which turns Scorpio into a more like celebratory, carnivalistic energy. Um, now it's all earth and darker, gloomy Capricorn energy, similar to how it was with Saturn and Scorpio in 2014. 
Okay, and what this means, Taurus, is that there are some very simple facts that are like revealed as if they were secrets, as if we never knew them. And as certain things are revealed or come to light, we can either like take this information or we can take these realizations and like capitalize them even further. Like, wow, I now realize that that relationship that was so turgid and so volatile and so scary and abusive, I now know that that was just a need for both of us to experience contrast. That was just a need for both of us just to have it. Like we wanted it so bad. I didn't even realize it, but we just both wanted so bad to be mistreated. And we didn't realize that, like, we were, like, tricking ourselves into thinking that this was, like, love or tricking ourselves into thinking that this was, like, something good. But now I realize, like, in this paradigm, in this in this moment, that that's not the proof in the pudding. Like, love is not what came from that. Like, there, like, the, the pivoting and the change in karmic momentum that both people had is, like, something that could only be, you know, chopped up to a need for contrast or a need for, and what I mean by contrast, it's like things that um, are unexpected or things that we don't want to deal with, you know, like experiencing anger, experiencing frustration, experiencing guilt, doubt, you know, bereavement, anything like that. Okay. So um, we can either like focus that and concentrate that even further and be like, wow, okay, my life is now devoted to experiencing, you know, difficulties. And that's like what I live for. Um, some people are actually kind of robotically moving into that. <clears throat> or we can heal it now, okay? Or we can heal it now and we can realize the higher purpose behind it all. What all of these experiences have led us to and the door that many of us have just been standing at and choosing not to go into, okay? Um, we could open that door. We could start moving through that now in November, and um, we can also release past burdens and past pain so easily to the degree that we are so light weightless that we might just fly right out of debt, fly right out of an existential crisis, fly right out of a karmic you know, trajectory that might have been anticipating us for like the next 30 years. So that's an incredible power to have right now if we can choose to release the shackles of past expectations. Wow, Taurus, what an incredible dialogue that was. It's something that I am so happy has come up because it's very like throat chakra. Like I've been trying to understand what was going on there energetically for a while. And it really took like the earth energy of Taurus to um, translate that into the voice and into... And what was going on. I think that uh, not only your sign, but many signs are going through that right now. And we're not expecting it either because a lot of us are just thinking like materially. We're thinking about money. We're thinking about jobs. We're thinking about future careers. We're thinking about, you know, um, where we're going to live and our houses. And that's really what the Capricorn energy evokes. But while all of that gets momentum, there are like other real karmic factors that we have to consider, like where we've been along all of those lines. So Really, really great thoughts coming up there. Thank you guys for helping me get to them. Um, anyway, a long reading, but let's get into your week to week, Taurus. Um, I will be putting an, ex an extended reading together on Patreon for those of you guys who haven't um, uh, been able to check out the Patreon page. Definitely do. After the week to week, I uh, then do a central theme and two supporting themes. Um, this channel takes a lot of work and a lot of energy and, you know, um, the Patreon page helps keep it alive. So if you're enjoying these dialogues or if this is helpful to you, you can always um, use Patreon to like either send a tip or to um, have a membership with, okay? Um, so anyway, let's move into the week-to-week -week Taurus. Uh, Queen of Pentacles rooted down by Six of Swords as your first week of November. A change in identity. I mean, that, that's what we've been talking about this whole time. First week of November is pretty solidly for you guys a change in identity. Um, also, that looks like forgiveness to me as well, because Queen of Pentacles always reminds us that we can't really hold on to old pain or old grief forever. It only weighs us down. It only keeps us in debt. It only keeps us, you know, um, in the past, okay? If we want these new future things, we got to really let go. We got to make space for the universe to fill it up. And also, as we start to make those changes, um, as we set sail, as we start to get things in motion, um, we can't be too weighed down by things. The Six of Swords is a great reminder of that as well. Like, who are you trying to 
get across the river, you know, is it like, like, can these people help you to paddle? Um, also what is threatening your boat? You know, what's threatening your vehicle of transition? We've got six swords stabbed into it. And whereas it's not capsizing, there's, there's a risk. There's something about this that is way harder than it has to be, you know? And that's, that's what I'm seeing echoed through this month for you guys is not for all Taurus. If you're feeling like things are easy, congratulations, but each week, except maybe the fourth week, but the first three weeks, it's like something is harder than it has to be, okay? Second week, you guys have nine of wands rooted down by the magician. I mean, you've already got it all. You've already got everything that you need. You already have all the words prepared. You already have all of the events in place. You already have all of the, you know, needed aspects, it feels like. Yet, um, it's feeling hard to maintain or it's hard to do things. Yeah, it's true. Like, November of 2020 can really transform what we're putting out as energy. And it does feel like you guys are kind of wanting to start over or you're wanting something new, something fresh, but you're just like sticking something out too and you're you're wanting to finish something for finishing sake. You know, Taurus is a very loyal sign. You know, it does not like to give up on things. It does not like to... Um, it does not like to quit unless there's like um, a love story involved. Like it's like love is the only thing that can uh, derail a Taurus or a Scorpio. It's what that axis has in common. They're very motivated, very loyal, very um, stubborn signs, but um, they have a tender point relating to relationships and relating to um, trust as well. So trust in relationships, Taurus, second week. All of November, really. Trust in relationships, trust in relationships, trust in relationships. I'm giving you guys like an anthem, aside from that other anthem that I sang for you guys earlier. It's late. I will disclaimer for you guys. It's almost two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> um, and, you know, I should get more personable, I think, with the reading sometimes. Um, it's two o'clock in the morning, Taurus. I've been going all day. It takes a lot to do 12 readings a month, plus, you know, anywhere from like four to eight standalone videos and Patreon content and you know, upkeeping it all is a challenge, but I'm devoted. And it's kind of like, you guys are like, like we have this in common right now where it's like nine of wands and the magician, like I'm kind of like the magician right now, you know, doing this reading, but it's kind of like nine of wands as well, because it's hard to do this. It's really hard sometimes, Taurus. It's really hard to do this and to keep this up. But I've been going for four and a half years and I'm going to be making some changes at the, you know, coming up, I, I hope. Um, but I love it. And it's not, a, you know, and I think that you guys maybe totally understand it or totally with me on this. It's like, I love what I do. And it's something that it's not like, I, it's not like I want to stop or it's not like I want to quit, but it doesn't make it all that easier, you know? And we get kind of stuck in that crux where it's like, okay, well, this is rewarding. And this is something that brings me so much joy and so much, you know, awesome people. And, and there's so much value here. Um, but it's not easy. And that's what Capricorn energy is all about. So anything like that in your own life, Taurus, like where, you know, it's like one of the most valuable things in your life, but you second guess it sometimes, or it feels harder than it has to be, or you're having to like go through the night just to like get stuff done. I mean, welcome to Scorpio and Capricorn energy combined. Um, just have fun with it. You know, it's like this reading is one of the best uh, experiences I've had in a while. And even though it's like, late and it takes a lot. It's like, um, really, really great. And I'm learning so much with you guys. Um, so that, that's kind of, kind of be how things are. I think just for the foreseeable future Taurus, um, you have to trust that there's something greater about it, you know, even despite it being difficult or despite it taking a lot of conviction and a lot of, um, wherewithal and loyalty and perseverance. Like we have to know that we are doing it for something greater. So third week, you guys have the Hermit rooted down by Ten of Swords. So I'm a little bit worried about you guys here. <laughs> that's what I've been looking to the whole time. And that's kind of what's inspired this whole dialogue about like the relationships and like the deeper past and about, you know, not realizing that sometimes we're like just in things to have a difficult time. Um, it clicks into place in the third week. And Scorpio also had Ten of Swords come up in the third week. So this is a weird coincidence. You guys should, should check out the Scorpio reading for sure, especially for those of you that have any Scorpio. But I'm sure it would resonate for all Taurus because, again, it's like your axis anyway. So third week of November, there's something a little bit crazy for everybody in the third week of November. This could be like 
something being contested or something, um, even like legal stuff or, um, you know, it's a very legal year, um, or meanness, rudeness, like those things can come up and it's a part of human experience. Like we can't freak out too much about it. It just happens and we have to, you know, deal with it as it comes. I think we need to be like ready and prepared for the third week of November. Um, so like ducks in a row, things in order. We've been getting things in order since like 2018 on this channel. <laughs> you guys who know what I'm talking about know what I'm talking about, but we've been getting things in order for a long time. And, um, especially since like cancer season, Leo season, Virgo season, Libra season, it's been like, let's get it in order. Let's get things going. Come on. And, um, that's all going to culminate for the third week of November and moving forward until we get into the Aquarian new wave, December 20th. So like third week of November to third week of December, that period of four weeks, that is a time of um, vulnerability for a lot of people. Okay. It's also a time of greed. It's also a time of, um, accosting or attacking like people can try to like, um, sue you or people can try to like, um, take something that belongs for, to you or steal from you or like there's some gross things that can happen because people's egos are literally the size of Mount Everest with these current transits. So yeah, it's great to be a hermit during that time actually and to not be too crazy and too out there with things because people can be literally insane. <laughs> I'm trying to be a little bit humorous here to kind of like, um, you know, soften it, but I think it's just coming across seriously because it's really not that much of an exaggeration actually. Um, but yeah, ego's the size of Mount Everest. Anybody that falls into that category, beware. Okay, beware. Ego games, huge with this, with Saturn and Jupiter getting to the latest degrees of Capricorn, going from the cusp of Scorpio to Sagittarius, having Mars direct in Aries, um, Venus moving towards Scorpio. The size of the ego is bigger than any of us have context with. So humongous ego issues. But it's also a really good testing ground. And the positive of it is, is like we are like testing ourselves. Okay. Um, just keeping perspective from like, especially during the third week of November and just seeing what comes to you, what happens. It's a great test of your current karmic context. And it's not to create fear. Like do not let anything get, ever give you fear if you didn't already have it. I'm not trying to make anybody worried or freaked out. This is more of like, um, a celebratory preparational phase is what I would like it to be like, okay, yeah, hopefully you're getting this video as soon as it goes up on Patreon, um, toward the end of October. And you're like, okay, I've got a whole month to like, kind of, you know, start to see things a little bit differently and start to get, you know, really clear on, you know, who I've been, where I've been, what I've represented, um, and to decide how that feels. And, um, really, as you're in that third week, like just pay attention to what's around you, pay attention to the signs and symbols, and that will show you what your like karmic context is. Okay. Like questions are answered. Things become less ambiguous. Things become less, um, of a mind game. Okay. So we went from like the first week of, or even like the last week of October until third week of November with like a feeling of like mind games or trickery or, um, you know, like trick or treat, um, Halloween type of, um, energy, not even just like the physical Halloween, but, you know, costumes, energetic costumes, dressing up, um, playing parts that are not right for us. We have to get out of that. Okay. Cause a lot of it's not even realizable, you know, a lot of it's like subconscious from what I understand. It's like, you don't even realize it until like you're out of it. So, you know, Neptune and Uranus are still retrograde and it may not totally, um, fix itself until after then. But, um, anyway, fourth week of November, Taurus, um, six of wands rooted down by eight of cups. Uh, yeah. Getting confident in what's over, getting confident in the, um, transformative nature of life. Um, in this sense, I'm feeling eight of cups a little bit differently. So I'm not feeling it like walking away unless we were to look at it, like you're walking away from an old pattern of insecurity or walking away from an old belief system that's possible, but I'm not feeling this like a physical exit or a physical departure so much. This falls under a different interpretation of eight of cups that I see sometimes where it's more about just, um, transmutation and more about, 
um, going from like hate to love or love to hate or uh, really philosophically understanding what those concepts are and how you know close to one another they are or aren't in your life. And I will say that I noticed that the people that it gets really far away from are the ones who really struggle. So what do I, can, can I like clear that up a little bit? It's like when love and hate are really extremely separate ideas, um, this can give people a tough time because they are very different, um, but they're both, how can I explain this? The, this is another video for another day. I'm not going to go too deep into it because we, we'd be here all night, Taurus. But so basically when you love, it's a very like direct outward Martian action. When you hate, it's a very direct outward Martian a action. And these are similar actions so they can easily transform into one another. We can actually start to love what we hate and hate what we love really easily. Um, and the more that we try to deny that or pull those two concepts apart, the more that they um, transform and become what they're not. And we try to reconcile it by redefining those concepts in and of themselves. So yeah, um, I think you just got to let things be what they are, like let things fall where they lay, you know, um, maybe you just love that person way more than you knew and the letdown of them, I don't know, cheating or whatever happened, uh, just, you know, it went from love to hate and you got to be okay with that. And because this is what's hard for Taurus. Okay. So to bring this through, to, to bring this thread through, it's like really tough for Taurus to like love somebody and then hate somebody. It's really hard for them to reconcile that, like how that happens or how that shift happens. And they can spend a lot of time like just navigating their lives without realizing they're just trying to understand how that was possible. And, and they're not even thinking about themselves and they're not even thinking about the career or thinking about any of that, but they're like disguising it all through the career and all of that. So it's just to answer it for you, Taurus, they're similar actions. And um, as we evolve more and more and we raise our vibration more and more, um, love becomes a little bit of a different thing and it becomes more of a, a state of being than it does a direct attribute toward a, an object or a person. Like I love this person, but I don't love that. Like I, I love this food, but I don't like that food. Um, but I hate that food or, you know, things like that. Um, instead it becomes like a status of acceptance and reciprocos reciprocosity, reciprocal, reciprocity, something like that. Um, it becomes reciprocal, like your status of love becomes just reflected in all around you as you raise and raise and raise. And that's like happening for you guys, you know, it's like getting there. So that's really beautiful to see that you guys are getting there. You know, six of wands being about confidence and being about um, rising up, elevating, and then eight of cups being about transmutation. And I, I just think it has a lot to do with you guys not getting so stumped or hung up on you know, well, I did love that person, but I don't love them anymore. But sometimes I still have good thoughts about them and I can't reconcile it. And sometimes, you know, I still hate them because of what they did, but I remember that I was there because I loved them. And like Tara spends a lot of time in that like maze and that uh, tug of war. And that's where Taurus gets like stuck and fixed in like cycles of, you know, a never ending marriage or dead or anything like that. But anyway, to conclude Taurus, I think this is like the longest reading of the month. You're beautiful. You're incredible. You might be changing a little bit this month, and it's going to be one of the most like spiritually engaging months you've had in a long time. Very satisfying in a lot of ways. Very satisfying experiences coming in for you guys when it comes to how you relate to your own spiritual journey, how you relate to your own emotional evolution. Those things are like going to be so poignant if you would like. You know, it's always hard. It's always possible for Taurus to be a bit of like a a cliffside or a bit of a, you know, rock where it's like feeling inanimate. But if you guys want to let this be a beautiful dream, it can be. So anyway, Taurus, thank you guys so much for checking out this reading on YouTube. Comment below if you made it all the way through this video. This is super long. Um, hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. That's like the best thing you can do. I'm so close to getting to 100,000 subscribers. It's crazy. Um, it's it's like almost here and it would just make my day. Like if you guys want to do nothing else like and like not jump over to Patreon to get the extended reading or anything like that or like buy my ebook moon symbols below. If you don't want to do any of that, just hit the red subscribe button and that will totally be uh, sufficient. Um, yes, thank you guys so much for being here. I'm going to do an extended reading for you now, a late night extended reading. You never know what I'll talk about over on Patreon. 
um, it, the, the topics get pretty wild over there sometimes. Um, so we're going to take a different look at things, uh, a different look at Taurus in the month of November. And uh, I will link that below and in the center of the screen now. Um, likes, comments, and subscribes here on YouTube make my day. And let's jump over to Patreon for your extended reading Taurus. Bye. See you soon. Much loves.